Google released some new Gemini models this past week, and one of them is really cool. It is Gemini that works with apps. So it works with Google Search, Google Maps, and YouTube. So it is extremely powerful, and I'm gonna show you 10 ways to use it in this video here. So the first thing you wanna do is go to gemini.google.com, and from there, at the top bar, you can hit it, and you have access to all these different models. The one we're gonna be using throughout this video consistently is this 2.0 Flash Thinking Experiment with apps and we can click that. So the first one I want to show you is this video here by Mr. Who's the Boss. It is 13 most tragic tech fails that need to die. So Mr. Who's the Boss is great, but if I want to quickly get the items in the video, I can actually give this prompt that says, can you list out all 13 items that they mention? And I gave it the URL of the YouTube video. And from there, it is saying, hey, the user has provided a URL. It looks like a YouTube URL, so it's checking to see if it's valid. And then it's saying the user has asked for a list of all 13 items mentioned. You can see what it is thinking. So now we scroll down, and we can see all 13 items that Mr. Who's the Boss mentioned within this video. So we can see GoPro, Sonic. We can even ask it a follow-up question, like, can you explain more about Eleven? And now it will say, hey, okay, Meta Threads, Item number 11 on the list refers to Meta's Twitter competitor that had a massive initial surge but failed to retain users due to missing features. And then it says according to this YouTube video and it goes on and on and explains to you exactly what Mr. Who's the Boss mentioned within this video. You don't have to have a link to a video either to use this, so let me show you another way. So if we come back, we can now type find recent YouTube videos about the YouTube algorithm and summarize five key principles mentioned. So now it is searching YouTube. It's going to find videos and it's going to summarize it for us. Based off the recent sources, here are five key principles of the YouTube algorithm 2025. Being able to use Gemini with YouTube is an extremely powerful combination and you can get summaries from videos really quickly and you can get jot notes. So if you want to watch like a workout video, for example, and you want to get a list of workout routines or you want to get a recipe, you can give it a link to a video and say, hey, list out the recipe for me. A very powerful tool. We can actually give it a prompt like this that says compare user reviews from Samsung S25 Ultra and the iPhone 16 Pro Max. Focus on camera quality and battery life. Tell if the person for each video has a bias towards one platform or the other which could affect the review. So it is now searching and it is using YouTube to search and say hey okay here are the reviews for the Galaxy S25 Ultra, here are the reviews for the 16 Pro Max, and it's using these URLs to compare. So now we have a good baseline of what it is comparing, and we can actually go back and reference these videos ourselves. But if we scroll down, based off the reviews, we can see that the Ultra uh, S25 Ultra is considered a versatile with great zoom capabilities and generally good image quality. The 16 Pro Max was praised for its natural color and reproduction and consistent performance across. And then we also have the battery life and there is a bias. The reviewer presents a balanced comparison, highlighting strengths and weaknesses of both phones without a clear bias. And it just goes through all the different reviews that it found. And here are the videos that it returned. Now we can give it a follow-up prompt based on all the above videos, based on just the battery life, which should I purchase? So purely based off battery life, as reported in the videos above, you should purchase the Samsung Galaxy S25 Ultra. And then it says in direct comparison videos, the battery life focus test, the S25 Ultra constantly demonstrated slightly battery life lasting longer in video playback. So this is just a really awesome way to figure out if there are people that have a bias when they're reviewing a product and which is better and you can compare across multiple videos extremely quickly when buying products so if you're purchasing something this is a fantastic tool to start getting a baseline on hey which product is better than the other so if we want to use it to help us purchase stuff i'm going to give you another example so it doesn't necessarily have to review two products it can also help you understand which product you should purchase. So in this example here, we have help me choose between a laptop and desktop computer for video editing and graphic designs. What are the pros and cons for each? So it goes and lists the pros and cons 
for each. So now we don't even have a product. It gave us this really long, good, in-depth answer about pros, cons, and which to choose, and choose a laptop if, choose a desktop if. It is pretty awesome for this kind of stuff. Up next, let's say we are traveling to New York City. We need some assistance. Well, Gemini can help us. So we have this prompt here, which says I'm planning a trip to New York City in the summer. Should I rent an SUV or a sedan? Consider gas mileage, road conditions, and passenger space for four adults. Can you list out things that I can do that are within walking distance of the hotel that you choose? I want to maximize walking when I get there, so every attraction should be within five kilometers. So it's a pretty in-depth prompt. We're asking it a lot of different stuff. We're asking it which vehicle we should use, and we're asking it to find a hotel and a bunch of places around. So if we scroll down, you can actually see what it's saying, SUV or sedan, hotel search, attractions. Here are the SUV and sedan for New York City, recommendations, gas mileage, overall recommendations. If we keep going down, here are the recommendations for a hotel. So it says to maximize walking during your trip and attracts within a five kilometer radius, a central located hotel in Manhattan would be ideal. So it gave us a hotel to consider, and it gave us easy walking attractions under one kilometer within our hotel location. And then it even said one to three kilometers, and then slightly further three to five kilometers. And then it goes on to tell us about transportation in New York City. So we can actually take this one step further, and we can say what good food places are around there. So now it is going out to find us some food places that are near our hotel. So you can see it is looking for our hotel in Times Square, and here are the places, the address, the cuisine, the rating, and it even provides us a nice map this time around showing us the places that it found. We can now ask find highly rated Italian restaurants near there that are open past 10 p.m. on a Friday night, and now we can scroll down and we can see the different Italian restaurants that are open, and there are three. It is just absolutely wild how you can take a really large prompt about planning a trip and it is doing a lot of the heavy lifting for you to get this trip planned. It's using search, it's using maps, it is using a combination of stuff. Let me show you one last example for purchasing stuff that you can use. So we can go back here, we can hit paste, this is our prompt, recommend the best home robot vacuum cleaner that has AI features, cost does not matter. So you can actually put in a cost, it'll find products within your cost, but for this, we said it does not matter. It says the iRobot Roomba S9, and it tells you your AI features, it tells you the Roborock S8 Pro Ultra and its features, and it has your recommendation, the most advanced AI features, obstacle avoidance and truly hands-off experience, the Roborock S8 Pro Ultra is the superior choice. So just a very fast way to find the best product based off a feature that I was looking for. Another area that it can do that we have not talked about is photos. So it is very good at understanding photos. So here I've uploaded a picture of Joey and I said identify the breed of dog in this picture. So it is going to read what the photo is. It's going to figure out what it is. And based off the image, the dog in the picture could be a Shih Tzu. And then it this goes on to tell you that the Shih Tzu and Lapso Apso have a similar appearance. And I have a Shih Tzu, which is Joey. The Lapso Apso is Bandit. So I actually have one of both, and I can tell you they do look similar. So it is pretty on the ball here. Uh, and it goes on to tell you about the coat, the face, and the size. So we can ask a follow-up question. What kind of health issues does this breed of dog have? So it is able to determine from a picture exactly the type of breed of dog that it is and the health issues. We can keep asking a follow-up questions and find out more about a Shih Tzu. We can also add a picture of a city. So here we said, what city is this? And we sent it a picture of downtown Toronto. So let's see what it comes back with. And it says the city in the image is Toronto, Ontario, Canada. And it knows that because of the CN Tower. So now we can say, can you list out five things that I can do there? So if I wanna get an idea of what's there, here are a list of five different things. So it is able to read photos extremely well. You can start to piece together search with videos, maps, YouTube, so on and so forth to combine all this stuff to make really enhance prompts to do fun stuff for you. I want to show you that it can research complex topics as well. So 
In this example here, we're going to give it a prompt that says Bitcoin dropped to a three week low based off the current market regulations and general market trend. Do your best to predict where Bitcoin will be next week. So it's searching for recent news articles. It's searching for articles about Bitcoin regulations. It's looking for general market trends and it is doing a lot of information and math and it's making a prediction so this is just its thinking now here is its output and you can see what it's saying in terms of its output and it is pretty extensive as to how it got it with links and history and all of that now let's say you didn't care about market trends you just want to know about a topic one thing versus another this is the last and final thing i'm going to show you but you can actually use this to form an opinion based off of a topic. So here we said, what are the main arguments for and against universal basic income? So you can see it is using Google search to find information. And here are arguments in favor. Here are arguments against. And it says important to note that actual effects of UBI are still debatable. So despite it giving all this information, it's just telling you, hey, it is still up for debate. And as always, we can hit this double check response and it is going to search Google. It's going to give you the links as to where it got it. So you can see here, we can actually click it and now we can click the search and we can actually click the links as to where this stuff came from. So if we click one, it actually pops up with soaring prices is universal basic income the right solution. The 2.0 flash thinking experiment with apps is extremely powerful with YouTube maps and search. And this was just 10 ways that I came up with that you can start using it right now, making it extremely powerful and useful. And if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to subscribe. Again, it is free. Don't forget to leave a like on the video and comment down below if you have any use cases that you can think of that would be helpful or useful based off YouTube, maps, or search. If you enjoyed this video, also leave a comment down below. Let me know what your thoughts are. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Videos, news, and stories to share. Thousands are waiting in the wrong right there. AI tools, AI news, AI prompts you can use. It's all for free. Just come and see at FranklinAI.com where you're meant to be.